Hi everyone, Tardis Sky 123 here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Paradise Towers, the second Seventh Doctor story from this era. And it features Sebastian McCoy as the Seventh Doctor and Bonnie Langford as Mel. So let's dive right into this DVD here. You have BBC DVD, Doctor Who Paradise Towers. You've got Cleaner there, Chief Caretaker there, and I won't say what's happening to him at that present moment in time, and the Doctor being strangled by a cleaner and then two Kangs, Red Kangs, and PG, Doctor Who DVD, the Sylvester McCoy years, 1987-89. to 89. Then on the side here, we have Doctor Who, Paradise Towers, and Blue Banner down there, with BBC and Two Entertainment in there. And on the back here, we have uh, Paradise Towers by Stephen Wyatt, who also wrote um, what was it called? Greatest Show in the Galaxy, that's quite a popular self Doctor story. And down here you have special features, so commentary, then horror on the high rise, a, a nice little making of documentary. A uh, bit disappointing that there's not it's not got Sylvester or um, Bonnie Langford in it, but nevertheless it's a nice little making of. Then casting Sylvester, um, short like three minute thing about how to, Partly how Sylvester got cast as Doctor. Girls, 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 the 80s with Sophie Aldred, Janet Fielding, and Sarah Sutton. That's quite a nice um, little conversation between them three. There's also some other Girls, Girls, Girls like the um, 70s and the 60s, and there's also Boys, Boys, Boys. Um, so, yeah, I think that's quite enjoyable to just watch that conversation, really. Um, that's probably the most entertaining uh, special feature on this. Then you have deleted and extended scenes, alternative soundtrack, etc, etc. And coming soon trailer for the Sunmakers. So, let's now take a look on the inside. We have, oh this is a bit different. Anyway, we have this here. Uh, Doctor Who Paradise Towers. Um, the DVD there and... Then you have the booklet here, and what I was mentioning earlier was that behind this, there was this, which I haven't actually seen before, I only just um, took the booklet out. I've, I've opened it up before, obviously, to get to the DVD, but I've never actually taken the booklet out before, so yeah, that was behind that. Um, there's the back of that, if you care, I don't know. Um, just a little advertisement for not to experience. Um, but here's the thing I wanted to show you, the little booklet on the inside, special features there, and chapter points. Let's put that all away, stand this up back there, and go into my thoughts on the story. Now, it's from the 1987 season of Doctor Who which isn't the most popular series with Bonnie Langford in it and you know a lot of people really do despise the slightly comedic tone they went for especially in stories like Time and the Rani you know it's very polarizing Doctor Who stories as is Delta and the Bannerman and Dragonfire and this story probably as well I think they're all very controversial some people love them some people hate them, some people like the tone, some people just don't, some people like Mel's companion, some people really, really despise her and can't stand her. Admittedly, her screams are a bit annoying, especially in this story, but, you know, I like this story. I will say that it's a very enjoyable story. I wasn't sure whether I would at first. This is one of what usually I have kind of like some kind of idea. I think, oh, that's a good idea. I think, I think I'll enjoy this, or maybe yeah that doesn't look too good but they get it anyway I don't know. but this story was one where I was really just like I honestly don't know this could either be really good or really laughable thankfully it turned out to be really good um, in my view not not the best there are some flaws in it namely in part four um, such as this character here has something happened to him and he's different for the part four and he's just very odd. I think the performance up to that point was very good. I think the act who plays him did a very good job with the Chief Caretaker character for episodes one to three. Um, it's very kind of like, it's 
it's very funny but also quite menacing at the same time which was good you got the balance right but then part four um, because the certain thing that happens to the character it just goes off the rails it just becomes an over the top slightly laughable villain to be honest which is a shame because you know you could see he had good act see he was a good actor from the first three parts um, but the fourth part unfortunately didn't go his way and then you have the cleaners which yeah they're also a laughable design and they they're just a bit too white that they stand out in the dark and dingy corridors. They just don't fit in all too well to the world of Paradise Towers. Um, so what about that world? It's very... Stephen White, one thing he will say from me, he's very good at world building. And this story really shows that. He's very much built a world here with um, Paradise Towers. You've got um, the Kangs there, you have the Rezis, and then you have the Caretakers. And the Deputy. And they've all kind of like got their certain things that go on like the Kangs have their own special talk like build high for happiness and whatnot and wall score and everything that's all that's all very nice it helps to kind of build them up as a gang but it also helps to separate them from the real world it does make them feel like a real world gang and also while they are kind of like teenagers you do kind of like get the sense that they're playing them a lot younger in a way they're like they're they may look that age but mentally they are quite a lot younger in the performance at least yeah, which is quite interesting I guess it kind of like it's a bit more um, younger kids how they would act in this gang sort of environment rather than older kids and then you have the resis who are probably the most the scariest I guess you know they have some really menacing scenes with Mel and whatnot there's that whole twist that goes on with them which is actually quite frightening and you think well that's actually quite creepy and you know just the way they work is very interesting and then there is the caretakers who kind of like strictly follow the rule book and there's some comedy to get out of that and you know they're mainly there for comic relief although the deputy caretaker is probably my favorite to care my favorite character in this whole story actually is the deputy caretaker He's just so funny, so well acted, and I think that character comes off really well in the story. So, Deputy Chief Caretaker, full marks to him, and you know he kind of like comes around at the end and whatnot, and that's all. That's all very good. Um, so, story-wise, the Doctor and Mel do get split up for a lot of this, which is good. You got the Doctor going off with the Kang and everything, and then you got Mel going off with I forgot his name. Um, he's a finely tuned fighting machine, Pex. That was it, and Pex is a rather interesting character as well, I won't go too in-depth into him, but yeah, I feel he comes off quite well in this story. Uh, so yeah, the plot of this story, it go, rolls along at a good pace I feel, you kind of like get to find out all the mysteries of Paradise Towers and whatnot, and that's very good, there are, as I said before, he's really good at world building, and there are kind of like some mysteries in this which work very well. There are some things which I find a bit odd, like the memory of the characters, I won't go too in detail about why, but it's kind of like something that you think they should know about, um, because they wouldn't have been that young when they went there, but nevertheless that's just a bit odd, um, not sure what's going on there too much, but overall I do like the world created here, the world is what really keeps me going through this story, it's very enveloping and it's also kind of like this dark black comedy in a way. There are some bits in there which are quite very dark and whatnot, but the story is very funny as well, and it's just a lot of fun. This story is, I really do enjoy this story. So, Paradise Towers, I'm giving it a solid 8 out of 10 because in part 4 it does derail a bit, unfortunately, but nevertheless, it is a lot of fun. And would I recommend picking this one up? I don't know. I personally really do enjoy this story. Um, but as I said, it's very polarising, like a lot of season uh, 24 is, and you know, um, if you've got other ones like Time and Rani, maybe not Time and Rani, actually that's a bit different, but um, you know, Delta and Abandonment or Dragonfire, if you like either of them, chances are you'll like Paradise Towers, if you don't like either of them, maybe you won't like Paradise Towers, maybe you will, I don't know. I enjoy Paradise Towers personally, but as I say, it's a very polarising story. People can really absolutely love it, and then there's people who will absolutely hate it. 
So what I'd say is you'll just have to buy it and see really if you want to find out for sure. And also this kind of like whole era is being recreated by Big Finish very soon in their upcoming um, main range trilogy with the Seventh Doctor and Bonnie Langford in We Are the Daleks, The Warehouse and Terror of the Sontarans. And all three of those look quite exciting actually, I'm quite looking forward to them. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed that they turn out good and I really do enjoy this story, 8 out of 10 as I said. And if you dive into this story too, then I hope you enjoy it. But until then, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.